Okay, you ready? Yeah. All right. Well, welcome everybody to the Shorter Artist Hour, where I talk to my superbly talented friends that I think the world needs to know more about. And um, we might not talk for a full hour, but that's okay, because it's the Shorter Artist Hour, and I'm Susan Shorter. Hello. And uh, today we are talking to my amazingly talented, incomparable friend, Jacob Walker. So, hi. What are you hey, working how's on? it going? Pretty good. So, we just got back from a convention. How'd that go for you? Um, Friday sucked. Saturday was cool. I met Friday a lot of new people cool. and yeah, made a few friends. Sunday was okay. Um, I was just telling my mom, cause I had to pick up my dog that if I didn't have to pay a hundred dollars for parking or like $6 and 50 cents for a small cup of black coffee, that my profits would have been better, but I'm still like, you know, I made my money back and got a little you. Yeah. Pretty much the same deal. Uh, it's nice being able to split like parking and stuff with Phil. So, oh yeah, Those and you guys like are... hiked in for a few miles, didn't you? One day, uh, yeah, probably four or five blocks. I don't know. <laughs> we can use the exercise. <laughs> nice. So, what yeah. are you working on now? Uh, I don't even know. I've got like six or seven product uh, projects going, and I don't even know where to begin. Uh, <laughs> How do you break up your time? Because you do a lot of like commissions. You've done, you know, those cool board games and all this kind of stuff. How do you balance that and still making personal work that kind of, you know, makes your heart happy? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, usually it's just whatever's the hottest that I have to get out. Yeah. And that's usually the battle is trying to figure out what I have to do when. And then sometimes I just kind of don't care and I do my own thing and make everything else work yeah but I go through long periods where I just don't do anything that's mine and that gets kind of hard to deal with um especially when anymore doing your own thing kind of makes you more money in a lot of cases so, yeah I was yeah. going to bring that up because at Indie Comic Con I was having these moments where I would see these booths and they're just wall to wall of these licensed characters that they technically are not supposed to be selling but they are and they're making money hand over fist like crazy on like these five dollar prints and i'm sitting here with my integrity with my own personal work and they're making probably three or four times the amount of money so it's just uh, integrity costs a lot of money it does it's bullshit thanks mom <laughs> for drilling that in me yeah uh. I don't know if you're going to do client work and stuff. Sometimes it's better just to do your own. I think. Yeah. Um, someone comes to you with a commission for a few hundred bucks for something. You can probably make your own money back doing your own thing. Sure. Uh, like this little dragon back here. I spent, I you that. know, a few days painting that I could have painted something for a client and made a couple hundred bucks off of it. But that I've sold so many prints of, I actually just sold that on Kickstarter Nice. And I've sold the original, like I've made probably four or 5,000. Well, maybe not five, but at least 4,000 off that image. That's incredible. Yeah. So I apparently have a lot to learn from you. <laughs> sometimes it's hard to take on client work. I mean, sometimes I want to just because I like the art director or I like the property and it's more about doing it because I think it's neat. But a yeah. lot of times when I get approached, it's kind of like well it's a bad business decision so i'll pass hmm. i get that i've been turning away a lot of um small commissions and different like graphic design jobs and stuff like that right now because i feel like i have this beautiful little pocket of time where i can actually focus and get some of my personal work done that i've been wanting to do forever but that is one last thing I wanted to mention about the people with all the different um the combos full of you know all the Marvel people or this or that so at least whenever you're doing your own original art, you know, when somebody comes to you that they're actually a fan of yours and not just a fan of whatever you're selling, you know, be it Star right. Trek or whatnot. Yeah. I mean, at shows like that, you could have a booth full of products that you bought from somewhere. In that case, those people are just sort of making the products, but they're not making their own thing in a way. Yeah. I mean, they'll put their own voice into it and have some sort of creative part that they add to it, obviously, to make it their own, but yeah i don't know i feel a little weird doing a ton of that although i guess i have with all the cthulhu stuff 
But I mean, that's an old story, though, isn't it? So would that be considered public domain? It is, but still fan art. Yeah. If you think about it. I don't know. Yeah. That said, I'm working on a whole bunch now anyway. So, yeah. But I think it, when it's something like that, though, it's something that you're passionate about because I've got my never ending story piece, you know, that's, you know, that, that movie with David Bowie that, you know, so well, yeah. yeah but, <laughs> but I mean, like, that's my fan art, but it's, I'm truly a fan of that. So, and I would think something like that shows the same with Cthulhu or Cthulhu or however the heck you're supposed to pronounce it. The green guy. Yeah. Yeah. That guy. Uh, I don't know. I don't want to discourage any of the fan art stuff either. It's all neat. I mean, sure. I've certainly done it. I want to do some more of it. Yeah. So. I guess my biggest thing is whenever I can tell it's like somebody else's work and it's just been filtered and all that kind of stuff. But whenever the kids come out and they're actually doing their own version and that's sweet to see. But speaking of big names, I don't know if I've ever asked you, you have Star Wars as one of your clients that you've worked for and the NFL. What were those jobs like? Oh, uh, so Star Wars was doing card art for uh, Fantasy Flights card game. Uh, I forget what it's called now. Maybe just Star Wars. How did know. they find you or you find them? or? I found them at a convention, just taking my portfolio around. And that was like one of my early jobs. I think I'd been painting for about a year or so. Wow. My portfolio went around, hit all these places up. And I remember one month I got three cards from them and two from uh, L5R and like a dozen drawings for an RPG. And I did awesome. all that in a month and then realized how much they all paid. And it's like I made enough to pay rent. And that just freaked me out and kind of wow. freelance for me for a long time. Like I just had a really hard time working for other people after seeing what rates were. So. Yeah. That's why I'm real curious about how, I mean, all the tips and tricks for Kickstarter, because it seems to be like people like you and other awesome fantasy artists make really reasonable living with that versus the crappy pay that you can get with some high-end clients now and again. Yeah. I don't know. Kickstarter can be, all over the place depends on how you approach it um i really like what phil started doing a few years ago yeah and he was just throwing a project on like here's the piece i'm sculpting and you know he'd make enough money off that to pay for all the materials and then like two months later he'd do another one and it was just this constant small kickstarter and i don't know i've we both talked about it quite a bit and how it could make for a different business model than what you see with a lot of Kickstarters where it's throw a board game on that you're trying to make, you know, a hundred thousand dollars or more, or get a book done where you're trying to raise 10,000 or more. Yeah. This is just small, fast Kickstarters to help fund what you're making as you make it. And the way Kickstarter's evolved over the past few years, you can do add-ons now in like a easy way to manage. And you can kind of look at your Kickstarter like a convention table in a lot of ways. Hmm. You got your main thing you're putting out, but you can also have like a whole list of prints and everything else on there that you've made. So... Whenever you're doing okay. something like that, when it comes to the shipping, I know I asked Phil about shipping, but do you do the whole, like, if it fits, it ships kind of thing? Because I would think with add-ons, then each ounce or whatever that you add is going to adjust the shipping, unless you do. Um, so you can have, like, your main item, it has a shipping cost, and then your add-ons, you can have a sign, like, additional shipping. So if they order, like, two of something extra, then all of a sudden they get, like, two dollars each added on for shipping yeah so it kind of works with shipping i'm pretty loose with all of it i know sometimes i'll undercharge a little bit sometimes it accidentally goes over a little bit yeah uh, just because you know you ship a thing to ohio being in the midwest here that's really cheap and then something goes to oregon and it's more expensive so it all balances out and i've I get it close enough to where, you know, no one's ever going to pay more than maybe a dollar over or something. I'm not 
gouging anybody on shipping. Yeah, that's what I'm afraid of. Is like I I don't want to you know screw anybody over or anything like that. I know a dollar here, a dollar there doesn't seem to really matter that much, and they're not going to care nor- normally because they're wanting to support your project. So yeah, what I usually do though is I'll like Google a post office or something in like Oregon and find out how much it costs and see what it costs to ship something locally and kind of average out. So. We have That'll one going now. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Oh, that's sorry. Um, I was saying you have one going now with the t-shirts and everything, which are super cute. Is that um, an original painting or did you do that digitally? Uh, that was on the iPad. Oh, okay. I, something I sketched out as a thumbnail or something. And during my last Kickstarter, I was just kind of messing around with that in the evenings. And I started showing pictures of it in the updates. So by the time that campaign was over, I decided I want to make a t-shirt out of it. And I had a few printed recently just to test it out and all that and got it where I wanted it. And here we are again. <laughs> what are you going to do for the add-ons or are there any add-ons? Uh, add-ons are just additional shirts, pouches, and pins. And then I have a coloring book I made and uh, I've got three of these little uh, embellished prints on there too. I was trying to keep it real simple because I've got a lot going on over the next couple of weeks. So, Do embellished prints sell well? I've never done that before. Uh, I don't know. I've only done a handful. Yeah. I've sold maybe four or five and I've made maybe six or seven or eight. I don't know. Um, just depends on where you take them. I've had them at Gen Con and Dragon Con and they've sold. And this is the first time I put them on Kickstarter and one of the three I've put on there sold already. So nice. Have yeah. you ever done those metal prints? They were kind of like a, a fad thing there for a while. And I still see them out some places. Yeah, I've meant to try them. I asked a, a person about it that makes them and never heard back. So I didn't do them. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. It's, it seems like they do well and might be fun for the right image, but I haven't yeah. really done it yet. So how did this whole art career thing start? Were you like the best kid in art class growing up? And did you go to school for it? Did you just self-taught or? Uh, I don't know. I was into comic books and album covers and all that. Yeah. Looking at the art on those whenever I was a kid and that was pretty much what I did in high school. And then I didn't really know what to do after high school. So I went to Ivy Tech and got graphic design stuff going and then ended up at another university to make it a four year and uh, took a bunch of art classes there. I actually ended up hating painting by the time I left. Nice. <laughs> so I didn't paint for like another 10, 12 years after that. Wow. And after a while, I got to where I just liked so many people's artwork so much that was painted that I just had to jump in and try it. And do you ever do watercolors or oils or anything, or are you just straight up acrylic? Well, I did uh, like pen and ink work, and then I'd color it with watercolor, and that's yeah. what I did for years. I did like some of my first client work that way, and I always tried to get it more and more opaque and finally just felt like I had to switch to acrylic because that's all the people I really liked. That's what they were doing. So, yeah, I feel that way with oils. Like I look at Annie Stegg stuff and I just, ugh, it's just so luscious. It's gorgeous. And it makes me miss okay. oil painting. I loved it. But as you know, we've got a small townhouse here and I would probably die from the fumes if I tried to do it in here. Yeah. I want to try that again to too. Yeah. And we've got pets. There would be little oil footprints all over the kitchen. And hair. So much hair. hair. Hairs in everything. It's like I've given yeah. up trying to varnish stuff at this point. Uh, I still get cat hair in mine, even though the cat's <laughs> outside most of the time. and Yeah. Can't get around it. There Makes it more personal. Preserve DNA for the ages. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Oh, I was curious. Like, you're somebody who does a lot of conventions. Do, how do you 
do you plan out your year? Do you plan out like your months and everything? Cause you're always so busy. And I'm just wondering how, like, do you just plan on making it like, just do as much as you can. And then the fat months will outweigh the lean ones. Or do you kind of have a schedule of like, okay, I can only do this much. And then I need mental health time. Uh, I don't do that many. Usually yeah. I'll do like four or five. I think six is probably the most I've ever done in a year. Really? Uh, I thought you were one of those that was just like gone all the time. No. Uh, it's like David Pancake. He yeah. usually has like 20 something a year, which is insane. I can't imagine. No. Um, I don't know. This year, I think I've got five, maybe. I okay. don't know. Still waiting to hear back from some. Still not sure if I'm going to apply to some. Yeah. I don't know. I make okay money. Not enough to like, you know, make it a full-time thing, but I've never put the effort into it to make it a full-time thing. Yeah. Uh, the booth I had at Indiana Comic-Con last week, that's kind of a new setup that I'm trying out this year because the little baby dragons have gone over really well. And yeah, just thought I'll make a whole booth of that and see how it works. And it's definitely gone better than what I've had in the past. So, yeah, I liked the layout, especially that little side table there. You know, it lets you really present everything really well. Have you um, played with doing uh, using it TikTok at all? No, I yes. pretty much hate social media. So, <laughs> I know, but there's like, especially with those dragon baby things, I mean, the younger audience, I think would eat that up. And I, I held off for the longest time because I was like, I don't have time to make all these magical little videos about the art, but I don't know if you know the artist, Emily Hare. Yeah. She, yeah. She's yeah, awesome. I love her work. Me too. But she just gave me this tip. She's like, just take a piece of your art and start in tight and then pan out. And then just like, that's enough, you know, it's just the, the little, this little video, but then that's enough to show everybody, Hey, this prints out, you know, look at this adorable little piece or whatever. And I think yeah. it can help. Not that you need my advice. I'm getting your advice here. <laughs> but, uh, that's just something else to add to everything else right now. Yeah. No, if it wasn't for art stuff, I think I'd be off social media completely. Just be an yeah. art. Hermit. I use it for that and for like, I have family spread all over the U S and so it's a way for us to share our pictures. But if it wasn't for that stuff, I would, cause I feel it just takes too much of my time, my life. Yeah. I don't know if there's too many jobs for artists to do and yeah. um, something's got to give at some point. Yeah. And fortunately, most of the time it's like it's the art. So yeah, I haven't painted in probably a week and a half two weeks now which yeah. is really bad with deadlines it is it sucks but i feel between you know making um like i do the the art stuff for sound booth but beyond that just yeah you have to do the, your own photography your own social media your own everything with it and i spent half the day just you know like getting my print sale ready to go and all that kind of stuff and if i could just capsulate all that time and actually paint i'm just i'm curious how much i could actually get done yeah i don't know i try and not that i do it well but i try and set everything up so it's just like if i get this done i can just drop it in this template and my print's ready to go and okay. drop it in this template so it fits on the website just try and make everything uniform and easy it's that and graphic it design training you've got yeah, I mean, graphic design, I kind of hate doing it for a lot of people. I've got a client I'm working with now that I like doing work for him, and I like doing my own stuff, and it's so useful, but I don't know if I could go back to sitting in an office doing it for corporate stuff anymore. Yeah. I love doing it for, like, board games and stuff, and then my own weird projects, so... So what's a normal day for you look like as a freelance artist? Is it different every <laughs> single day? Pretty much. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. Same I either have here. like a million things I'm trying to get done, like all the odd tasks, or I sit down and paint and like everything else just waits. Yeah. If I get going on a painting, like even if stuff really needs to get done, it probably won't because I'm focused on that painting and that's it. Wow. Once I break that concentrating, it gets really hard to get back to it. 
And then I feel like I have to backtrack on the painting and end up repainting a bunch of it. Just kind of get in the flow again and find where I was going. Yeah. So. Yeah. So I, me, I usually have like a five o'clock is pretty much shut down time. And then I, then I have the evening for myself to do whatever I want. Unless I, work, I have a deadline. Yeah. I work all day, every day, but it's like a break here to go do this or that and work for a few hours, do this, do that, make dinner. Yeah. You know, I'm pretty much working all the time, but with lots of little breaks. Yeah. Naps like today I did some uh, working on, what is it called? Adventure number three for Sherlock Holmes. I did the cover art for that for Sound Booth and had to do some emailing with, I guess we're going to be working with Ant Atheon Books or something. I don't know. But um, so doing some stuff for them. And then, yeah, I had to go up north to get my dog and then come back and then do some just ticky tacky stuff for the website and and then try to slap some makeup on and get ready to chat with you for a little bit <laughs> here we are yeah ta-da so yeah. did you always know you were going to be an artist was there any other career you thought about be a veterinarian uh, race car driver anything not really I mean when I was little I liked dinosaurs and I thought archaeology would be neat but that never went anywhere I pretty much fell into drawing comics in high school and then found like magic cards and started doing more fantasy stuff and um i don't know i i guess towards the end of college i started freelancing for game companies and That's wasn't so doing cool. anything big or major then but you know i was doing it got my foot in the door and honestly was doing a lot of work probably before i should have because i hadn't quite figured out how to paint or do anything yet at that point but yeah you know. nice well oh, i'm well. jealous you get into gen con have you heard from dragon con yet no what the heck uh from what i've heard they got like a crazy number of entries like three times what they normally get or something so yeah i don't know i'm really antsy to find out but also uh i don't envy them having to go through everything and for sure a hard job so well, fingers crossed i saw somebody posted something about the uh, spectrum art show and that's been a that's been a minute since they've had one of those i really hope they bring back the whole spectrum thing yeah i'm not really sure what's going on with that i know it merged with planet comic-con but i don't know if the books are still coming out or not i don't make it to a bookstore often because you know there's not very many and <laughs> especially no, it's out been paused since um mid 2022 i think it was and um yeah i don't know what's going on. i keep hoping they'll come back because that was my dream once i discovered fantasy art is my illustrations class um kathleen o'connell she was an, an amazing professor but she had this closet just full of spectrum so i was like oh ta-da that's what i want to do with my life because there was like boris and julie and all these people and i'm like i just these people are incredible and so that was became like a bucket list thing. It's like, I must be in Spectrum. And so yeah. they have to come back or I will be unfulfilled. But you're an infected by art, right? I am. And that's awesome. And I'm very grateful for that. And, um, but I still need Spectrum. Well, if Spectrum's done, that's kind then of- Then infected by art is Spectrum. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of taking its place, I guess. Yeah. So you were in Spectrum, weren't you? No. No? Well, I went to the show. I was... Okay, that was it. At a table one year, I think. Yes. That had to be fun. Yeah. That's cool. Pretty, that was the year I almost sat on uh, Richard... Not Richard. Uh, Martin. George R. R. Martin's lap. I almost sat on his lap on accident. <laughs> How did that happen? Uh David Pancake took me to like a room party because there was uh, some writing convention going on next door. And we went in a room and I backed up to sit down in a chair and realized someone was sitting there and like, oh, it's George R. R. Martin. Weird. <laughs> <laughs> Almost sat on his lap. Nice. Yeah. You got to love conventions. Yeah, it's pretty neat. Phil almost fell on the... Uh, guy from walking dead that plays ezekiel i've never seen that show is he the i know the guy with the big uh dreads and had the tiger i think i've seen some fan art of that 
All right, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> eh, what are you going to do? Yeah. Zombie kind of thing I got into was uh, Last of Us and Shaun of the Dead. Shaun of the Dead's fun. Classic. Yes. You have any more Kickstarter knowledge for us? Um, uh, I can't remember what I talked about already. I made a few notes here just in case, but um, yeah. Let's see. so my general plan with Kickstarter going forward is just to do a bunch of small Kickstarters. I mean, if I have a big one, I'll do that too. But for the most part, I'll be releasing something small like t-shirts right now and use the Kickstarter to pay for all the product that I make. I'm not really looking to make a ton of money off of it or anything. Just yeah. have products so I can sell it at shows and online. Um, each time you do one, it notifies people that were in previous campaigns. That's good. So every time you do it, you kind of build your base a little bit bigger, which is more reason to do a lot more often and maybe jump around like this one's in the apparel category. So I'm hoping I get maybe some new people yeah. from all that. Um, normally I do like the art and illustration ones. So I kind of want to jump around a little bit to try and draw in different people. Um, when you're naming it, try and throw as many keywords in there and stuff so that when people are searching for your stuff, they find yours. So um, what else? What That's was me. your first one? And what do you feel like you've learned since doing that very first little Kickstarter? Well, the first one was a big one. I did a book, but Kickstarter's changed a lot since then. Yeah. Now there's so many like big corporate people on there with big campaigns where they have like products that they could totally do themselves, but they put it on there to get more money and pre-sales. Yeah. Back then there was a lot less of that. So it was easier to get noticed and probably get a bit more money. But I did a uh, collection of uh, Lovecraft drawings. It was yeah. like a drawing a day kind of thing that I put text to and threw some paintings in with and made a book. And I accidentally did everything right. And it did really well without awesome. really knowing what I was doing. So I learned a lot from that, but lucked into a lot of it too. So. Nice. How do you feel like you get the most traffic from? Is it like people that know you from social media or I, I hear some people get a decent amount from actually quick Kickstarter or. Yeah. Well, about Amazon and Etsy, people go there to shop. A lot of people go to Kickstarter to shop too. They'll nice. check out like new stuff or the product or projects we love tag. They check that out, stuff like that. So it seems like maybe a quarter to a third of people come from that. Yeah. So with some of these small ones, I'm not really even advertising that much. I threw out a thing on Facebook and Twitter today and I'll probably do it once in the middle and once at the end, but I'm not going at this every day saying, Hey, look at this, look at that. Yeah. So I don't know. Oh. Facebook definitely seems like the best though. Um, over the years, Instagram, I've probably got like, you know, only what I can count on my fingers off of that site yeah. to actually translate over to the Kickstarter. So I haven't mentioned it on there. Don't know if I even will. Well, with your uh, freelance income, what do you feel like is the, the biggest chunk of it? Is it Kickstarters or conventions or your online store or? Um. I don't know if I could divide this into percents. But... <laughs> it didn't have to be exact. <laughs> yeah. I'd... Okay. We'll look at it like this. Maybe a quarter is from freelance, maybe a quarter from uh, conventions, a quarter from like online stuff, Kickstarter. And, you know, maybe someone will see a painting and buy that uh, off my site or something. For sure. Um and I guess I used, I used to have like maybe a quarter of it come off of passive income, but that's kind of not there anymore. Not as much. I've, yeah. I know you and Phil used to work together now and again. Would you just take occasional like side jobs and stuff? 
No, I mean, like, I had a bunch of t-shirts and, like, oh, random okay. junk on Amazon and stuff like that, where I just upload it and walk away. I've got some coloring books on there. And nice. for a short while, in, like, 2019, I was paying my mortgage with that. Wow. Yeah. And then the pandemic hit and like they shut it all down for a few months because of production and all that. And I think oh. it totally messed up all the algorithm stuff and it was like starting over. So I really oh. want to get back on that and get that going again because passive income just makes it easier to be choosy with what jobs you take. Yeah. It's wonderful. Mm -hmm. I've got some work in a few stores here and I forget about it. And then I'll get a check in the mail. I'm like, oh yeah. All right. This allows me a little more time here. Yep. Uh, it all adds up. And also after the pandemic, watching friends like make a living off of doing conventions full time, seeing that get shut down and them freaking yeah. out. Yeah. I remember social media, just seeing everybody in my feed, just totally losing their shit. Cause that was their living. Yeah. So I like having stuff spread out over a number of things. Plus I kind of figured out over the years, I can't do one thing all the time. I just get yeah. burned out. So if I can jump around a bit, that helps. Sure. Well, and you mentioned your coloring book. That's actually how we met in my Facebook thing. My memories, it said you and I have officially been friends for six years yesterday. <laughs> it seems oh, like wow. it has, seems like it's been like shorter than that, but. Uh, no name pun intended there. Uh -huh. Yeah. But um, yeah. So yeah, we met because of this same sort of thing. You giving me tips on coloring books and Kickstarter and stuff. So thank you, kind sir. Sure. <laughs> info. I mean, all the yeah. artists I know, they're all so giving with their time and info and we help each other out. I don't know if other like genres of art and illustration are as nice as fantasy but i know yeah i'd like to think so because it's just yeah the, the community is absolutely amazing i love that i feel like i can just go to anybody that i feel like is doing something well and just ask for their two cents and yeah it's a nice little family but we have like five minutes left is there anything else you want to tell the world or share or anything coming up or cons that you're going to be at uh Okay, I'll be at uh, Motor City Comic Con in like a week and a half. Okay. I'll be at a LuxCon. Everything else is me waiting to hear back or setting if I'm going to apply or not. Yeah. Uh, also, if you give me a follow on social media at Jacob Walker Art, you can see me work through a Lovecraft book that I'm illustrating and laying oh, out and cool. writing. So awesome. I'll be doing that for the next year or through the end of this year, I'll be doing a lot of that. And you you also have a Patreon. What's the link to your Patreon? So they can uh, watch that as well. It's also Jacob Walker art. All right. Perfect. Yeah. You know, other than that, I'm just doing oddball art stuff and doing game layout and <laughs> trying to make a living. Hell Yeah. Well, we'll have to chat soon, but in person at Upland, enjoying a good beer and a, was it Cuban that you boys like? <laughs> <laughs> yep. Right sounds good. Well, thank you so much. And uh, yeah, I guess we'll wrap this up. And did you ever find that cracker, by the way? From this show or the last one? Geek meat. Yeah, I found it. You found all the pretzels I left in your setup, right? I found two. Two? Okay. Oh, crap. I'm going to have to go through my boxes. They were just on the wall. Okay. <laughs> right on. Well, thank you again, kind sir. And um, yeah, I think we're good. Everybody check out Jacob Walker's art, and I'll be sure to post links in the uh, in the show notes. So. Okay. And time. if anyone wants to hit me up with questions or anything, I'm always happy to chat art. So. Right yeah. on. All right. Well, thanks again and have a good night. Okay. Thanks for having me. Of course. Bye. Bye. <laughs>